Welcome engineers, my name is Travis IQ, and today we're setting up a basic infrastructure and packet tracer. Hosts, switches, routers, IP addresses, IP addressing interfaces, all of the above. Let's go. we are doing here is pulling in router 2 and router 3. These are 2911 Cisco routers uh, from the options under networking, devices, and then routers. We can then rename the routers LAN and DMZ to help us understand the topology configuration. Next we are pulling in uh, physical interfaces, specifically HWIC 2Ts, which are serial NICs. This will allow us to generate a serial point-to-point. -point. You can also notice that if I try to pull in a, an HWIC 2T without the power off, so with the power on, it won't allow me to do that. If I turn the power off, then it'll allow me to drag the module in. This is pretty common. You probably won't, wouldn't want to drag a module in, in or pu put a module in a physical interface right without the power being off. I'm just then verifying that I can bring the interfaces up here and enter privilege exec. We then connect the two routers via a serial via a serial cable. Uh, you'll notice that I didn't choose to use the lightning cable, which is the little cable that identifies the interfaces automatically and, in, and identifies the cable automatically. You can. It's generally recommended for like a CCNA or something like that not to do that so that you know what cables you need for, for which device to device connections. Next, we are dragging in the switches. So these are 2960 switches for both the LAN and the DMZ network, and kind of aligning them so that the topologies look halfway decent in the pictures. Then we are connecting via straight through cable, the router and the switch. This is the uh, LAN switch. Then we will also connect via straight through cable, the DMZ router and the DMZ switch. You'll notice that all the interfaces are off by default on the routers, and so the router, router, the router default for interfaces is shut down. All actions actually are, or all configs are actually defaults at this point because we haven't made any configuration changes, so we haven't been in the Cisco CLI at all. Next, we need to add PCs. So if we have a PC routed network, after we get these things lined up, we need to have PCs in the network. And so we add PC0 and PC1 to the LAN switch, and we rename the LAN switch to LAN switch, something a little bit uh, consistent with the nomenclature. We rename the DMZ switch, DMZ switch, so that we have an idea of which is which, at least on the top, at least in the topology there, which makes a little, which makes more intuitive sense to us. Then we'll connect via straight through cable the PC0 and the LAN switch. You'll also notice that the LAN switch now is has the interfaces on by default and so PC0 and PC1 actually have connections established with with the switch by default because the switch is an access technology and so we then connect the PC1 to the switch as well you'll also notice that I'm using sequential fast Ethernet interface numbers FA03 FA04 and then on the DMZ switch I'll also use FA05 and FA06 this is absolutely unnecessary the only reason for this is to help with consistency and understanding so that when I'm doing like interface configs or when we're looking at the interfaces it's they're identified independently we could use all FA01 and FA02 for example on both sides It'd just be a little bit more confusing as to which which side of the network we were looking at whether it was the LAN or the DMZ side Before uh, adding any IP addresses to any of the interfaces or to any of the PCs, we'll do a little bit of resizing here, obviously, to make everything fit in the window, maybe even move some things around to make, make it so that it's a little bit more legible, although it is a little bit difficult uh, from a legibility perspective just because there's so many things going on here. And I've, and I've also shown all of the interface IDs and all of the uh, names of switches and routers and PCs. On the left side now, we are defining the network, so it's a good idea, obviously, before you make configuration changes and IP address changes to actually decide what the network layout is going to look like from a, a, a logical perspective. And so what we've done here is define the 192.168.10 network for the LAN network. And so that's a 255.255.255.0 subnet mask, also known as a slash 24. I've used the easier nomenclature here just to make it easier for me to put on the topology table or on the, you know, the, this, this topology. 
the DMZ network is going to use the 172.16.20 network, dot zero network, with a slash 24 or 255.255.255.0 subnet. I'm using completely independent private addressing schemes here just to make it a little bit more clear which network is which when we do the configs. Uh, in a regular networking environment, you would probably use some sub some subnet of the 192.168 or some subnet of the 10 network. In the case of the serial point to point, then we also use a completely different private addressing subnet space, which is the 10 network. And in this case, we use the 10.0.1.0 subnet slash 30, which is actually a subnet mask of 255.255.255.252. Finally, we give the logical addressing for the PCs as well. So PC0 is going to use the 192.168.10.2 network, uh, network ID or IP address, sorry. PC1 is going to use a 192.168.10.3 IP address, and then we're going to use a .4 and .5 addresses in the 172.16.20 network. Again, it would it's a little odd to use the .4 and .5 addresses for the 20 network and not use the .2 and .3. The only reason we do that is just I wanted to have completely independent IP addresses. So the next thing that we are doing is adding the IP addresses to the PCs in the configs. The first PC is PC0. This will be the 192.168.10.2 address. You'll notice that in this configuration, I'm actually using the config tab in the PC0 configuration window. And then I have to navigate to the settings tab to configure the default gateway, the 192.168.10.1 address. In PC1, I actually do this an alternate way by using the desktop tab and then navigating to the IP configuration GUI box and clicking on the, the GUI box and then adding 192.168.10.3, the address, the 255.255.255.0 subnet mask. And then also I'm realizing here that I can actually add the default gateway in the exact same window. Although I clicked around, I actually can add it in the exact same window. And so I do 192.168.10.1. We now have both PCs addressed in the LAN in in the LAN subnet or the LAN network, the 192.168.10 network. What I'm going to get, what I'm going to do now is actually configure the router or the default gateway interface, which is G00. So you see me here changing from the F01 interface, which was a mistake, to the G00 interface, and then adding an IP address. And that IP address is the IP address of the default gateway for the LAN network, which is 192.168.10.1, with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. And then we are then turning that interface on with the no shutdown command. I actually concatenate this command with the no shut. And so now we have the interfaces up, the router interface is up, the PCs are IP addressed, and now what I'm doing is actually sanity checking. And so I'm sanity checking that I can ping from the PC0 interface or from PC0 to the 192.168.10.1. And so what I'm doing here is sanity checking to make sure that when I go through and do the config on the DMZ side, that the configs that I thought were correct on the LAN side, now if I do a similar config on the DMZ side, it should work just fine. And in fact, we see the configurations being entered. So I'm entering the configuration for PC2 here, 172.16.20.4 uh, slash 24, as well as the default gateway, which is now 172.16.20.1. I then add the IP address to PC3, which should be the 172.16.20.5 address, which should line up with the documentation from the topology as well, which it does. You'll notice that Packet Tracer actually pulls in the 255.255.0.0 subnet mask. That's because that's the default subnet mask for the 172.16 IP address space. And we just amend that for the subnet that we're using, which is a, which is a slash 24. I then go into the DMZ router, I move my CLI around so you can see the DMZ router and we can see the, the interfaces that we're using. We're, we're using interface G01. So I enter the interface G01 subconfig and then add the IP address 172.16.20.1 as well as the subnet mask 255.255.255.0 and I turn the interface on with the no shutdown command or the concatenated command no shut, which makes my life a little bit easier not having to complete the command. Finally, we go into one of the other PCs and ping from that PC to the 172.16.20.1 address, which is the default gateway, and confirm that, that that PC can also reach the default gateway. The only thing that's left here is actually configuring the IP addresses and turning the interfaces on on the serial interfaces. And so what you'll see here is what I first do is I actually exit out of the interface subconfig and then enter the interface serial 030 configuration subconfig. I actually don't have to do that. I could have entered the interface S0 slash 3 slash 0 command and then just gone straight to that interface subconfig, but I chose to do this just to illustrate it a little bit better for the documentation of like the lab. Um, and then I add the IP address 10.0.1.1 with the 255.255.255.252 
subnet mask, which is the slash 30, and then I turn the interface on, you'll notice that the, that the red triangles still exist on that link because the other interface isn't on, so a connection isn't established because only one side of the, the, the interface is on. And so now I go into the other interface, and in this case, it's actually the S that S zero slash three slash one interface. You notice I actually navigate there directly from another interface subconfig, so it's to illustrate both ways to do it. And then I add the IP address 10.0.1.2 with the slash 30 subnet mask 255.255.255.252, and then add the no shutdown command. And now the link actually comes up. And so if I ping from the 10.0.1.2 address to the 10.0.1.1 address, you'll actually see that all that four out of the five are, are successful, and actually all five would be successful had I done this again. And so the last piece here is, you might say to yourself, well, Travis, in this configuration here, if I tried to ping from PC0 to the DMZ router or from PC0 to PC2 or PC3, what's gonna happen? And in fact, because these routers don't know about those remote networks, uh, you actually, will, this will be unsuccessful. And so this is why I call it a basic network setup because I would normally just set these networks up with the default gateway and the PCs, and that would be a switch, a router, and a PC setup. But we're actually gonna use this, this networking setup to talk about static routing and the fundamentals of routing. And so if you stick around in part two, we'll actually, discuss the fundamentals of routing and add the static routes and allow PC0 to ping all the way to PC3. But that being said, I think this is sufficient for now. As is always the case, engineer, break stuff, have fun, and we'll see you next time.